go around to the back. Grace and peace to you, church, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome to worship here at Amity Presbyterian Church, no matter where you have come from, no matter what label the world has given you here, you are called beloved child of God, and we are so glad that you are here. Uh, friends, please take note of all the announcements on the back of your bulletin. There's a lot there. There's info about providing bag lunches and toiletry bags for um, those who are served by the Charlotte Men's Shelter, and that is over this coming week. So please take note of those details. You'll find the prayer list. Please keep those names close to your heart in prayer throughout this week. You'll also find information tucked into your bulletin about the Christmas Joy offering, and that is one of the ways that we stay connected with the larger denomination. Presbyterians um, from all over give to the Christmas joy offering this time of year, and that offering goes to two places. One is to um, help out retired church workers and clergy and musicians and staff, all those folks who are in times of financial crisis. And the other half, goes to support educational opportunities for students and communities of color through Presbyterian uh, schools and colleges. So those are both wonderful things to give to. You can give today, drop that envelope in the offering plate, or bring it back Christmas Eve or next Sunday. Um, if you give online, please do know that 
just note in there, Christmas joy offering in the uh, notes section. Donna asked me to let you know that the beautiful poinsettias that you all ordered and gave in honor and in memory of folks, if you are not going to be here on Christmas Eve, and only if you are not, <laughs> you can take yours today if you have someone, if you want to bring it home or if you have someone to give it to. But if you are going to be here on Christmas Eve, we do ask that you wait until that night to take it. This will be a busy and beautiful week in the life of Amity Church. On Tuesday, hopefully you all got the message, but on Tuesday um, here in the sanctuary, there will be a memorial service for Linda Frankson, an Amity member who passed away last month. Um, she used to sing in our choir, and so this is a way for us to show up for her family and to honor and remember her. So that is the service is at 2, um, but you can come early and greet the family from 1 to 1.30 in the church parlor. So you are invited to care for them and to grieve with them. Then, Friday, somehow, is Christmas Eve already, and we are having a service at 5 o'clock. We will gather to worship for a candlelight service. This is important for us to be together to tell the story, to hear the good news of Christ's birth, and to share it with others. So I want to challenge you this week to find two people to invite to church. Don't just invite, offer a ride. Offer to bring them with you, two people, so that we can share the good news with our neighbors, our friends, and with our community. And then, <laughs> next Sunday is the Sunday after Christmas, the 26th. We are going to worship at 11 o'clock like every Sunday, but we are going to have a casual and comfy um, worship service together where we're going to sing all the hymns that we didn't get to sing through the season that we love. We're going to tell all kinds of Christmas stories, have fun. So come dressed as comfortable as you want. Kids, you are invited to wear your pajamas to church. <laughs> Adults, you are too, but I'll leave that up to you <laughs> if you would like to do that. So come comfortable, come ready for a nice family Christmas service here at Amity. All right. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Ella Sue asked me to remind you all that <laughs> the end of the year is almost here. And so if you are giving to the church, if you've made pledges and you want to fulfill those pledges, you have more to give this year. Do it by Wednesday. Next Wednesday week. <coughs> right. Um, anything made after that will be 2022. All right. Thank you for that reminder, LSU. All right, friends. God is doing so much here among us. But now let's take a minute as the 11 o'clock hour is chimed and let's calm our minds and hearts so that we can open ourselves to the movement of God here in worship.
Good morning. Good morning. Using the words in the bulletin, please join me in the Advent candle liturgy. We are seeking deeper faith, a place to belong, the feeling that God is here in this room. We are seeking joy that overflows, the courage to love, the conviction to act in the face of injustice. We are a seeking people, but here in this space, we are found. This is our sanctuary. God's love is here. God's love is like an open door. The roof over our heads and the floor beneath our feet. God's love is the street light that guides us home and a table with room for everyone. Today, we light the candle of love to remind us of the truth that God's love is a home for all, for you and me, for neighbors and strangers. May the light of love burn brightly in this space and even brighter in our hearts. Let us worship God. Beloved, I invite you to rise in body or spirit and sing O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 44. of the nativity story that we tell each year is how with a sudden visit from an angel Mary's whole world turned upside down everything changed in an instant and in that moment as we'll hear today she sought out the safe haven of her relative Elizabeth 
a moment of things being turned upside down, that is something that we can all relate to. It hits close to home. Because over the course of these last two years, we have felt our world get turned upside down over and over and over again, it seems. When those moments come, church, we hope to respond with grace and trust, but more often than not, fear can get the best of us. So today we turn to God in confession, asking for God's guidance and grace in the places and the moments that we need it most. So children of God, let's pray together first through song. Together, let us make our confession. God of safe places, we wish we were more like Mary, who in the face of great change went and sought help. She did not wait for help to find her. She walked to the shelter she needed. Too often, we wait silently for the world to change around us instead of speaking up for the things we need. Forgive us for failing to care for ourselves the way you would care for us. Give us the courage to be more like Mary. God of safe places, give us the grace to be more like Elizabeth, greeting those who come to us in need with a joyful welcome. Hear us, Lord as we offer you our silent confessions. Amen. Family of faith, rest in these promises that are confirmed in the waters of baptism. Even if we miss the person standing on our doorstep, even if we fail to care for ourselves the way God would care for us, even if we forget and we ignore, if we turn away and we shut down, God still loves us. There is nothing that we can do to lose God's love. Church, if you get lost, you will be found. If you mess up, you are forgiven. If you withhold love, God will still lavish love on you. Let's speak together the assurance of grace. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's sing of that good news. Let's sing Jesus Loves Me as the children come forward. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. 
morning. Glad to see all of you today. I want to share a little bit of the Christmas story with you today, okay? This is what happened after the angel visited Mary and told her that she was going to have a baby and that that baby would be called Jesus and would be the Son of God. She got that news, and then Scripture says that this is what she did next. It says, at that time, Mary got ready and she hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and she greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Mary sings a beautiful song. So I wonder, wonder with me, why do you think Mary needed to go and stay with her relative after getting that news from the angel? She was overwhelmed, yeah, I bet. That'd be some pretty big news. Hmm, yeah. Hmm? That's okay, that's okay, you can keep thinking. Yeah, she was overwhelmed. I think you're right, Louise. She felt overwhelmed, and she needed to go see someone who helped her feel safe. Do you think she felt safe with her family? Yeah, I think she did. She felt safe, and that's where she went. She needed to be with someone who helped her feel safe, who helped her feel like she could handle what God had given her and told her. Do you have safe places in your life? Places where you feel really safe? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, with mommy? Yeah, yeah. Places where you know that you're loved? Hmm? That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes pretending helps us feel safe too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Is there something that you like to do that helps you feel at peace and warm and safe? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. You like to hang out with little children. That's right. Sometimes caring for others is a place that we know about love because we get to share it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So there are places in our lives where we feel safe and understood, where people listen to our stories. And it is my hope that this church is one of those places for all of you and for anybody who comes through the doors, for anybody that any of us meet, we can be a safe place for them. We can provide, is a word called sanctuary. We hear that, right? What's a sanctuary? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So you both, I heard two different things. One of you, both of you said, here, this, this room is a sanctuary. This is where we worship. And then June said, it's a place for animals where they are safe, where they are cared for, like at the zoo, right? Yeah, that's right. Sanctuary is a place where we worship. That's what we call this place. But it is also a word for a place of safety and a place of love, right? A refuge. When things are going crazy, we go to the sanctuary and we can feel safe and secure and at peace and loved. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we can be a sanctuary to other people. We can be safe for them. I brought up here something that I'm going to ask you guys to help me with. Um, What is this? A trough, yep. It's a place where animals, like we, there's food for animals, if there's animals around. Yum, 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 that's right. And, oh, your face mask is an animal. <laughs> Cute. Yeah, this is also called a manger. It's a place where food is, and who was born in a manger? Jesus was born in a manger. Jesus was born, it seems kind of crazy, right? The Son of God was born into a place where animals eat. (laughs) It's kind of silly. But in that moment, 
in that moment when there was not a bedroom somewhere, when there was not an extra place for them to stay, they found safety and sanctuary among the animals mm -hmm. and with the people who loved them. So this is going to be our manger, and we're going to take it back to the, to the playground. And I've got some things, some pieces of paper here, and there's some back on the table at the playground back there. And I want you, this is going to pretend this is our hay, our straw. And I want you to prepare this manger to be a safe place for Jesus. So I want you, what kind of things can we um, offer to other people? What kind of things can we put into the world so that when Jesus is born, it is a warm and safe place? What kind of things do you think would make someone feel warm and safe? Hmm? Food, yep, yep, food. I'm going to write that on here and put that in. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Pets, animals. Well, in this story, there are animals that help. And that animals can help us feel safe and secure, too. You're right. Um, what about how we treat people? How do we treat people? Hmm? Love, with love. I'm going to write love on here. All right. Is that what you said? Oh, what would you say? I can hear you. Oh, kindness. What? Well, that's similar, right? Love. Okay, kindness. I'll add love. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what I want you to do when you guys go back to the playground is keep thinking of the things that you would give to Jesus and give to other people that you love and that you want to provide safe place for. You can write them on here. You can decorate these, make them beautiful, make the most beautiful hay you've ever seen in your life <laughs> and put them in the manger. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask the two of you to carry since <laughs> just to take it to the back if you can, okay? But hold on, don't go yet. Let's say a prayer, all right? Would you like to repeat after me? Okay. Dear God, thank you for the places mm -hmm, where we feel safe and loved. Watch over the people who aren't safe right now. Help us to be safe place for others. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Amen. All right. You guys can go to the back. The playground is at the back. Is there some kid-centered things? And if you would help, I would appreciate it. Can you guys take it? It's not too heavy. It's just a little big. You got it? All right. <laughs> Let us pray. God of the stars and God of our hearts, our days will pass, but your words will last. The earth might fade, but your words will last. Our memories might blur, but your words will last. The grass will wither, but your words will last. The sky could go dark, and your words would last. So as we listen today, help us to hold on to what will last. Help us to hold on to you. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes from Micah. 5, verses 2 through 5a. But you, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. 
Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. Now we turn to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 39 to 55. Listen again for God's word. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. This is the word of God, and it is for you, the people of God. There's a song by a folk singer, a folk singer-songwriter named Carrie Newcomer that I've loved for a while now, and this song is called Sanctuary, and these are the words of the chorus. Will you be my refuge, my haven in the storm? Will you keep the embers warm when my fire is all but gone? Will you remember? And bring me sprigs of rosemary. Be my sanctuary till I can carry on, carry on, carry on. In her song, she goes on to sing about finding herself in a place, in a moment in her life that she never expected. A place that brought her to her knees. She sings of streets called us and them, and that it's going to take a while till the world feels safe again. I think we can all say that we know something about that place. And then, and then she lists these places and experiences, metaphors for sanctuary. She says, rest here in Brown Chapel with a circle of friends, a quiet grove of trees, or between two bookends. For her, these are places of safety, of warmth, of welcome and love. My own list of these places would include a guitar and a few voices to sing with. It would have my mom's kitchen table and the embrace of a few particular loved ones. These are my places of sanctuary. I wonder where yours are. Who are the people? 
What are the places where you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are loved, that you are safe? What are your places of refuge? If you close your eyes, can you picture yourself there? When I came to the gospel passage this week and I read once again Mary's powerful song, her Magnificat, I thought of Carrie Newcomer's song of Sanctuary. I have always loved Mary's song in itself, but this year with our Advent theme, our worship series where we are digging into the idea of being close to home, I began to wonder more about another part of this passage, about Mary's journey to her relative Elizabeth's house. What is it that drives her there? Or what is it that draws her there? She has just received the angel's life-changing message about a pregnancy and a child that she will bear who will be called the Son of God. And she has just given her consent to God, saying yes to this miracle to come. But what might seem simply wondrous to us, it was in fact dangerous to her. As a pregnant teenager, poor, unwed, the dangers and the uncertainty would have surrounded her from that moment forward. Physical dangers, societal dangers. So as she is coming to terms with the significance of what God is about to do through her, she must also be reckoning with the very real possibility of losing everything and everyone that keeps her safe. I imagine that in that moment, the magnitude of all that is happening is a heavy weight on her shoulders, a paralyzing mix of awe and fear. I wonder if this is what drives her from her own home, her own town, to seek refuge with Elizabeth. You know, sometimes we think of, of Mary's song as her immediate response to the angel's visit, but church, it's not. She doesn't sing until she makes this journey. She doesn't sing until she finds the presence of her relative, Elizabeth. She doesn't sing until she is welcomed into the safety of Elizabeth's home, into the embrace of Elizabeth's joyful welcome. It's only when Elizabeth and the child in her womb welcome and affirm her that Mary bursts into her own song. Here, Mary finds sanctuary. She finds a haven in the storm. Here, Mary is seen. Her story is received and it is believed. Here, she finds a kindred sister, proof in the flesh and blood that God keeps the promises that God makes. Here, Mary is understood and she is blessed by the one who welcomes her. And suddenly, suddenly she isn't alone on this life-altering, world-changing, unexpected journey. She is safe. She is welcome. She is loved. And so she sings, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In the sanctuary of Elizabeth's presence, Mary is able to lay down her fear and claim the joy that she finds in the Lord. She is able to see her own belovedness in the eyes of God. She knows that she is blessed. And not only that, though that would be enough, not only that, but she sings with the courageous, self-assured, prophetic 
language proclaiming what God has done and is doing to turn the world upside down. In this moment, Mary sings a song of protest. She sings a redemption song. He has done mighty things, scattered the proud, brought down rulers from their thrones, but he's lifted up the humble. He's filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. Because she is safe and seen, an unwed, pregnant teenage girl without an ounce of earthly power. She can lift up her voice in a song of vindication against the powers that dominate and oppress people like her. And she does it with God's blessing, church. She finds her voice. And it is when Mary seeks and finds refuge in Elizabeth's embrace that she can then become a sanctuary for God. And she can become a witness for all that God is doing in theological talk. The Greek word theotokos is used to describe Mary, and that word means God-bearer. Mary becomes the dwelling place for God. She becomes a home for God. She becomes God-bearer. Even after Jesus is born, she continues to make and to be a home for God as she loves and cares for Jesus as he grows. She can do all this because Elizabeth joyfully gave her shelter and space when she needed it to recognize and to claim her own belovedness and to give voice to God's incredible calling in her life. Church, when we ourselves receive safe refuge, then we have the capacity to provide sanctuary for others in a different way we can become God bearers. We can become dwelling places for God's love and light in this world, a place of warm welcome and joyous affirmation of God and of others. And like Mary, we can proclaim the values of God's kingdom that turn the values of this world upside down. And then, then church, we labor until the weary world rejoices. We work. We labor. That is who we get to be. As followers of Jesus, the light of the world, that is who we get to be. But is that who we are? There are people in this world, people in our lives, people in our own families who do not know where to turn for refuge. People, God's own children who have found rejection and hostility when they show up as themselves, wearing their own skin, carrying their own story. People who have not known safety or who have experienced far too little of it in their lives. People for whom a simple word of love and a genuine embrace and welcome would be a lifeline, a saving grace. Each of us must ask ourselves if we are willing to be a safe person for someone else, able to offer refuge to the weary souls in the world. And if so, if that is who we want to be, what must we be willing to give up to be that safe person for another child of God? Must we give up our reputation? Maybe. Or how about being right <laughs> about this issue or that? I wonder what Jesus would say is more important. 
being a place of refuge for another person, or being right. Sometimes we do have to choose between those two. And we must ask those same questions of ourselves as a church together. How are we providing sanctuary in this weary world? How are we becoming a place and a community where God's love dwells freely and abundantly? And would our neighbors answer those questions about us in the same way that we would? Do they know that if they are feeling unsafe, unheard, invisible, that they can come here and find a community of people who will love them without condemnation or judgment? Can they really find that here, church? Do they know that we, like Elizabeth, would rejoice to be in their presence and offer them God's blessing because we know that their presence blesses us? Church, we must ask ourselves, do we really welcome people like that? I know that you would. I know that you do. And I know that you want to practice and get better at it. In our congregational visioning process that we have been going through this whole year, you all named this very thing as one of the top priorities for our church as we head into God's future for us. You all said, that you believe that God is calling Amity to focus on being a safe and judgment-free space for all. You said that. Friends, that is a beautiful and sacred calling. Becoming a sanctuary of true safety and joyful welcome for a weary world, that is beautiful. And we are going to put in some serious holy work in 2022 to live out that calling in the years to come. It takes intention. It takes sacrifice and risk and labor. But when it happens, church, there is so much beauty. People who are lonely, they find belonging. People who feel invisible, they are seen. People who feel lost, find direction. People who are in danger, find safety. People who are despairing, find hope. People who feel worthless learn to see the image of God that dwells within them. Wounds are healed. Forgiveness is given and received. The injustices that our neighbors experience become our holy cause, and the world is changed. Church, all those beautiful things that I just listed that happen when the church becomes a place of sanctuary, they don't just happen to those people in the future who might walk through our doors. <laughs> they don't just happen to them. They happen to us, too. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we are changed. We are transformed. I know this is true because I have experienced it myself. I know this is true because I get to witness it, and I am witnessing it here in this place with all of you. Beloveds, just as Mary, the God-bearer, the dwelling place for God, just as she found herself seeking sanctuary, so too did Jesus so too have we, each of us, along with every child of God on this earth, will at times need a refuge and a haven from the storm. If we listen closely, we will hear God say to us what God has said from the very beginning. The door is open. Come on home. And when we hear that word spoken to us, then that word becomes flesh. That word dwells among us where every weary soul can hear. The door is open. 
Come on home. Will you be my refuge, my haven in the storm? Will you keep the embers warm when my fire's all but gone? Will you remember and bring me sprigs of rosemary? Be my sanctuary till I can carry on, carry on. Carry on. This one knocked me to the ground. This one dropped me to my knees. I should have seen it coming, but it surprised me. Will you be my refuge, my haven in the storm? Will you keep the embers warm when my fire's all but gone? Will you remember and bring me sprigs of rosemary? Be my sanctuary till I can carry on, carry on, carry on. In a state of true believers, on streets called us and them. It's gonna take some time till the world feels safe again. Will you be my refuge, my haven in the storm? Will you keep the embers warm when my fire's all but gone? Will you remember and bring me sprigs of rosemary? Be my sanctuary till I can carry on, carry on, carry on. Let us pray. Holy God, our prayers are often one lovely act of seeking. We bow our heads and we close our eyes and we seek. We seek you. We seek belonging. We seek sanctuary. Lord, what is lovely is that we know deep in our bones that if we knock, we will find you. So today we pause our seeking to simply give you thanks. We thank you for the Elizabeths in our lives, the ones who have been there when we needed them most, the ones who have blessed us with joy, allowing our happiness to take up space, the ones who have opened the door for us and ushered us in.
And Lord, we thank you not only for the Elizabeths in our lives, but for the strangers who have cared for us. For those older and wiser who have paved the way before us. And for individuals who share no relation to us, but love us like family. Our lives are undoubtedly better because of them. And Lord, this morning, help us to pray for those without an Elizabeth in their lives. We pray for those who do not have a hand to hold in the dark, who do not have a front porch to show up on or even a porch to call their own. We pray for those in life transitions who carry that fear and anxiety alone. And we pray for all who know loneliness in the face of these hardships. Lord, wrap your arms around them. Circle back again and again, dwelling tenderly in the wounds of their hearts until healing might be found. Lord, open our eyes so that we might see the need in our own backyard. Thank you for being our safe place. Thank you for always welcoming us home. It's with gratitude for all that you are and all you have been to us that we bring before you and one another the names of the people and the situations that we carry in our hearts this morning. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. Thank you, God. With hope in our hearts. Now we join our voices and we pray the words that you taught your people to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Since we are not passing the offering plate right now for COVID safety reasons, you can give to God online through our website <laughs> or in the offering plate at the back of the sanctuary as you leave. Uh, I want you to know that my favorite offering of the whole year is for Presbyterian disaster relief. <laughs> Typically, we take that offering at Easter time, but it is one that gives to people in disasters throughout the year. And of course, we've had so many disasters this year. We've had floods and tornadoes and fires and mudslides. We've had terrible problems in Kentucky. We've had terrible problems around the world. Our gifts are needed for disasters. We also have the opportunity to give to the joy offering this morning. 
There are so many oppor opportunities for us to give to feeding the hungry, to helping those in need. God loves a cheerful giver, not out of necessity, but as each of you has determined in your heart. Let us give joyfully. And then we're going to sing the closing hymn. And I want you to notice the words of Mary's song and her anticipation for how God was about to change the whole world. That is found on your insert in the bulletin. Let's rise and sing Canticle of the Turning. <laughs> My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed. Could the world be about to turn? My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near. And the world is about to turn. Though I am small. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would for you yearn. So you throw your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress top, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king be aware for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no Our tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from to rage, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. The saving world that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod shall be crushed by God, who is turning the world Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to burn. Friends, the world is about to turn. How wonderful that we worship a God who welcomes us gently into safe arms and who turns the world upside down to make it right. Friends, as you go through this week, as you leave this service, 
your service begins. Comfort the homesick. Open your doors to others. Seek and offer sanctuary. Be brave enough to go home by another way. And remember that here in God's house, all are welcome, so come back soon. In the name of our foundation and home, God, Spirit, and Son, let us go in peace and let us go singing. Go and know God holds you, the Holy Spirit's with you, and Jesus loves you. Go and know God holds you, the Holy Spirit's with you, and Jesus loves you. Go in peace.